Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Too nice a day to be sitting inside today, so I'm out in the garden. Um, don't know what the lighting's going to be like. And I've got a puzzle sent to us by Niraj, who um, had a look at it. I think it's from the enjoysudoku.com website. He found it very difficult, fed it into a solver, and he thinks we'll have better... A better logical solve. Now, I'm not convinced by that, but uh, I'm going to have a go and we'll see how we get on and uh, if we can learn anything from this. So, starting down the bottom, we've got an 8 in row 7 and 8, so the 8 in row 9 has to be in this box. And that's at least one digit in. 5's at the top, 5 in there, in rows 1 and 2, so the 5 in row 3 has to be in the top left. Um, that'll give us a five in one of these two cells in that box. And the four in this box must be one of those two as a pair. Three up here must be there or there. One, it's not a pair, but it's a, one of those three. And that, in fact, puts, that's quite useful. One in row seven there, one in row eight there, the one in row nine because of this in column one must be here. So that it's actually sorted out the two fives as well. So we've resolved the five there. And now, given that five, that's going to put a five in the top row up here as well. So we now know that one, three, and five must appear in that top row. And in the end box, in the end cell, it must be a one. So these other two are a three, five pair, which... As always, any pair that you can get restricted to two cells is pretty powerful. So we know that these other three cells in the central row of this box are four, nine, and six. And um, oh, four, six, and nine, four, six, nine, and this one must be either four or nine. So given that those are four, six, nine, that resolves the four here. And then we have a two, seven pair. Um, in the central row there, that gives us a 6-9 pair in the remaining two cells in that box. So some quite useful work at the bottom there. Now using that 6-9 pair, 6 in column 1, we've got a 6 in column 2 there. The remaining 6 has to be here. Um, and that gives us the two cells in which a 6 could be in the central box. Um, what else have we got? Now, what was the other thing? Six, nine. Mm, that's not very helpful. We already knew a nine was restricted there. Eight, no, five. Ones. Ones could be anywhere in column three in the top box there. Now, anything going on out here? Sevens, no. Again, sevens could be anywhere in that column... <clears throat> oh, I haven't seen this from the start. An absolutely obvious eight there from the two givens. That's quite nice to get another digit in. Three, eight, nine, six, four. But not all that helpful, actually. Not many follow-ons from that find, unfortunately. Three here and three here are really restricting where three can be in the top left box and that is determining two cells for the possible three <coughs> in the top right box fours are also in the same row in that box um three four seven nine five six would have to be there there or there I don't know it feels like there are some useful restrictions going on in that box but not quite enough to make um to make a, a bit of progress in determining an actual digit. 654319, we've had a go at 8. There's quite a few places. Hmm, we really are running out of information a bit now to uh, make notations, so we're probably going to have to come up with something clever soon. I'm not sure I'm really quite prepared for that yet. And there's another digit we can place immediately from the sixes here. Um, the only six in this top box can has to be here. 
Um, and that resolves this as a six here, which means we've got a four nine pair in the bottom there. Now I think we're going to have to go searching for something. And there are quite a few restrictions about this four five here gives us some restrictions in this box. Now let me just have a quick think about this. Um, choo, choo, choo. I think this is interesting. Now just follow along with me here. If um, now, given that this is Duncan Sudoku Solver, if we place a wrong digit, it may show up in red. So I'm going to see what would happen. So if I was to resolve this 3-5 pair here as a 5 here, which is very restrictive, by the way, and a 3 here, that puts a 5 here in this box because of this 5 that is very limiting. Now, that is going to send... That five, actually, that five creates a five here in the central box and a five here in the bottom box. And that five limits the fours because of this four and this four. So four in the bottom box would have to be here. That puts a four in the central box here. That puts a four here. Um, we've got four, nine. And this is quite interesting now. Two nine five four six. The three and seven are up here. Look at this. Look at this. Seven and three. The one. Um, this one's become a four. The one has to be here. And now what this is suddenly telling us: the two nine here are putting two and nine here and here into row four. The one seven up here are putting one seven into column five and this square this innocuous cell here can no longer be six four eight three or five because they're in the column it can't be one or seven because they're in the column above it now in some order and it can't be two or nine because they're in this row here and that's all the digits this was impossible wow that's quite a long chain so you know Sorry if that's too complicated to follow, but you can just about see that in your head with the fours and fives if you try. Um, if you don't, I'm not sure. Niraj told us that he'd put this puzzle into a solver and it hadn't come up with anything that was really very followable. So I haven't done that, but um, I have worked out that that five there was... That was so restricted that it looked like it was going to have some effect. And that all started, I hope I have unwound everything, from this 3-5 pair not being 3-5. So instead, they're going to be 5-3. And that may help us make some progress. That puts a 3 here. Now you can see that 4 is in column 8 or 9 there, and in column 8 or 9 there. 4 has to be in this cell here now, because it's the only one left if columns 8 and 9 are ruled out. Um, that gives us a 4 here, which feels a much freer place. 4 there in the bottom row. Um, 5 in the bottom row must be next to it again. That puts a 5 in the centre, a 5 here. Um, we can finish off this row with its 2 and 9 now. Now that resolves this nine box up here, or nine cell, I mean. Um, one, eight, three, one, five, four. Now, what can we do now? And I mean, now we're sort of flying along in a very different direction, but it, it just feels much more likely. I do, some of this is feel, and I mean, I wish I could explain why that restricted five looked like it was going to end up in a problem because it did. It was mostly an instinct. Um, but there we go. Not sure. I'm going to just take out some of the digits we've proved wrong there. Um, I just feel that that's, that should have cracked this. We should be able to uh, make enough progress to finish it off. Now we've got 
one, two in one of those two boxes. Those two cells, I mean. Um, two, I'm not sure. Six, nine, nine, six, three, four. Um, I'm sure there must be something I could be doing now. Seven, four. Eights. Eights are either here or here. Six, four, two is in the central column. What else have we got? Come on, there's something going on. Oh, this box down here, this surely. 831254. Um, seven certainly is at the top side of it, but ah, oh, and that means seven is either here or here because the sevens in column four and five have to be in the top and bottom box. 824563. This could still be one or nine at the moment. That would put one or nine here. So two and eight are both in the top of this box. Two and eight are in the middle of this box. That's three or seven. Hmm. Sure that there's a way of making progress. Now it just again feels like we're wide open here. And I'm probably just not managing to finish off comfortably. Two, two, two. That's one or seven. That's two or seven. Ah, so eight. That's not an eight because of the eight below it. The eight there prevents that being an eight. And the eight down here prevents that being an eight. So the only eight in the middle in row two has to be here after all. Uh, that gives us an eight here. That puts two here. We've got one nine there. That resolves four and nine because these must be one and nine between them because of the box. Gives us seven. This is one. Seven here. Two here. Um, we've got two and four to fill in this box. That gives us two and one in that box. Five, six, one, four, two, nine. Six, four, three. Still not sure on that. Down the central column, no. Ah, down column four, we can now place six here. Uh, that gives us the six in column six. And that's very useful for sevens around the grid, generally. And I think well, that's all the sevens placed. Now we've got eight and three in the top row three in the central box that gives us eight and two and we're now just finishing off this is one nine in the central row one here three nine at the top and nine here and that resolves the six nine pair over here if I could find where six is there we go so that is Mirage's Sudoku done. Now, I mean, that was a that was a longish logic chain in the centre with the uh, fives and the fours, but there was clearly going to be interaction between the fives and the fours, and they had to either sit next to each other in these in these cells in the bottom box or in the next two cells, um, and that was clearly creating some restrictions. I admit, in a competition, I'd have been kind of following that through in pencil rather than trying to see it in in, in the brain, but um, because it's quicker, frankly. Um, I'm sorry if that looks like cheating to some people, and that's how to do that puzzle. So I hope you enjoyed that. Do feel free to subscribe and uh, sponsor us on Patreon, as Niraj did, which is why we were keen to have a look at his puzzle online. And uh, thanks very much for following us on Cracking the Cryptic. Bye for now.